Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Today, the 30th of July, we have some balance changes and we're going to be going over all of them for the healers in the War Within because it's massive, okay? Let's start off with Druid as there's a slight decrease to the healing that you're getting out of your Grove Guardians with Keeper of the Grove. Notably, it was actually the better of the options. It looked to be a bit better of the options. It's more tuning to things like Scenarius' Might. But there's also some very massive base tuning adjustments, notably to buffing Convoke, while at the exact same time nerfing Tree of Life. So going from 10%, or sorry, 15% increase to your healing and 50% increase to your Rejuve's healing to now 10% and 40% res respectively. You're also having a few different talent adjustments really coming into things like Regenesis, Embrace of the Dream, which were some of the, especially Embrace of the Dream, which are just like not ever taken. Nourish, I can't even remember the last time when it was actually taken, has been increased by 100%, which is really cool, but also really strange that they threw Druid into this situation where they were dependent upon Treants, and now they're seemingly moving away from that. I know Druid, Druids would be very happy to see Flourish's duration to be increased to 8 seconds instead of 6 seconds, especially for Raiders. Unfortunately for the M Plus players, they're still having to deal with Flourish and Photosynthesis competing against each other for this one. Power of the Arc Druid now has a 60% chance to activate instead of a 40% chance, and a lot of your damage got nerfed. Uh, notably, Resto Druid was one of the highest DPSers, or healer DPSers, in the War Within Beta, and so it's not too surprising to see some of the damage nerfs coming in on this one, but it always hurts nonetheless. For Evoker, there were some obscene logs where Consume Flame, that's when you engulf the Dream Breath uptime and you just explode for additional healing. Uh, there were some insane logs where healing taken modifiers were on the target, were just bursting for obscene amounts of healing. Uh, that has been fixed, that has been corrected. Notably, this is kind of a dub of a patch note setup, really, for preservation evokers, because they didn't do anything to Lifebind yet. And so Lifebind is still an avenue of a huge amount of healing. So, unfortunate on the Consume Flame, but it was kind of bound to happen with how much HPS evokers were doing. Augmentation also got some nerfs to both Evan Might's primary stat that they're provided, and Close's Clutch Mates, which is increasing the value of their Eons and Ebon Might when they're not in a raid environment. So having that nerfed is honestly going to be pretty big. And I'm amazed that they didn't actually do any changes to not buffing the healers or the tanks, but these are some pretty substantial nerfs that are also getting lumped onto augmentation. So personally, we love to see it. For Miss Weaver Monk, Con of the Celestials unfortunately got a 8% healing nerf. It's not really too big of a deal. Uh, it's, I mean, the Conduit ability was doing great amounts of healing. There are also less secondary stats that you're getting out of Inner Compass. But, and you're having a slight nerf to their Vivify and Enveloping Mist healing. Not really the end of the world since these abilities, like Celestial Conduit in general was just very strong. The Yulon's Whisper gets a healing increase. Yay, it's just kind of a boring ability, I would say. Jade Bond, notably getting a good... Uh, Increase to the cooldown reduction of GG. I know it says it kind of backwards. And increases the healing of Yulon's Soothing Breath by 50%. So cool to actually see if there's going to be some more uses for something like Jade Bond for cooldown reduction. A the most notable thing here is Tier of Mourning getting another round of nerfs. I think this is the second week in a row, if I'm not mistaken, where Tier of Mourning has gotten some nerfs. And it's pretty interesting to see if they're trying to like keep on sliding the spec away from a caster setup. Ever since, like, the removal of Clattered Focus, you know, people were going back to playing Rising Mist setups and raids so that you're not playing Ancient Teachings and, you know, full-on damage to heal, but you're still using your damage to extend your hots and to get more Vivify Cleaves as a result. Uh, notably, you were having to path through Healing Elixir in order to get to Invigorating Mists, which... You know, kind of locked in survivability, but it was also an odd way of forcing you to take Healing Elixir, even if you didn't want to, because you needed the Vivify Cleaves out of Invigorating Mist. So, they swapped that, and that's a nice, nice change to see. On the Holy Paladin side, we got a bunch of changes coming in. Notably, on the Lightsmith side, Blessed Assurance now increased the damage of your next Crusader Strike by 20% instead of 100%. This is really the talent node where people were trying to make Avenging Crusader really work, was that you were just hitting your spender and then hitting a huge hitting crusader strike that would just heal for a ton uh notably avenging crusader aka melee wings has not really been that good for a while um that was kind of carrying that aspect but there are some other buffs along the way 
Righteous Judgment has a higher chance to create those Consecrates, which is fantastic. Blessing of Dawn increases the damage and healing of your Holy Power Spenders by 5% per stack instead of 20%. Actually, the bottom side of the class tree getting a number of nerfs. Fading Light, Seal of Order, increasing Blessing of Dawn's effect by an additional 5% instead of 10%. You do have some good buffs coming into your spenders with Word of Glory and Light of Dawn getting buffed. Now, if this gives you a little bit of whiplash, that's because Word of Glory, I think, got like a 12 or... Actually, I think it was an 8% nerf last week. I think Holy Shot got like a 13% nerf last week. And so now we're going back to buffing our spenders. And honestly, I'm in favor of that. Our spenders should feel great to cast. Hammer of Wrath's damage has been increased by 50%. But now it has a higher cooldown. Awakening requires more stacks to activate. This isn't too surprising. It's actually uh, not shocking when your spenders actually feel good that Awakening was just hard-locked, insanely good talent. Tears Deliverance has been underperforming all beta and now getting a 30% heal increase and increasing healing taken by 12%. It's a nice buff. I honestly hope that they... <laughs> I hope that it's not good enough still, personally. I wish they would move something like Righteous Judgment, uh, I believe, which is the Haste node under Tears Deliverance or to the side of it. Um, I don't like having the extra setup out of an ability like Tears Deliverance unless I'm putting together an entire build around it, really. We'll see. Crusaders might not getting some nice buffs, reducing the cooldown of Judgment and Holy Shock by two seconds. So remember what I said about Avenging Crusader. You're having some more buffs coming into it, but also buffs to things like Sanctified Wrath, decreasing the cooldown of Holy Shock by 50% for its duration. So you're also having Overflowing Light, where 30% of its heals or its overheals are turning into an absorb. So it seems like they're getting maybe a bit less healing out of Holy Shock, more healing into your spenders. You're using Holy Shocks as powerful heals, but they're not the ones that are just carrying you, and you're going to be a little bit more carried by the spender healing. So I love to be able to see that. Crusader Strike's damage has been increased by 25%. They've also made some big improvements to Save by the Light, making it have a higher health threshold at 50% instead of 30%. I think this is going to be fantastic. Save by the Light's one of my favorite uh, thematic abilities in the game, and it has felt garbage for a very long time. Notably, some nerfs to Summer. I wish they would remove it. Transferring 12% of your healing into damage instead of 20%, and transferring 12% of your damage into healing instead of the 10%. So, you know, it's a little bit less damage that you're netting out of it. But Shield of the Righteous damage has been increased. That's a nice way to see it. Uh, I'd imagine there's some behind-the-scenes changes they're making to Summer. I wouldn't be surprised, because there was really weird situations where sometimes it didn't proc, and sometimes it felt like it procced almost too much. So I'm really curious to look at how Holy Paladin's damage is going to be looking with this next build. Power of the Silver Hand, notably, now increases the healing of your next Holy Shock by 20% of all damage and effective healing done was 10%. I'm curious again about the proc rate that we're going to be seeing because I felt like I liked this ability when I got to use it, but it felt like it just didn't proc that often. And the locations of Righteous Judgment and Liberation have been swapped. Overall, I'm pretty happy about these Holy Pally changes as they're not just nerfing the living daylights out of them every single patch. There's been a lot of weird imbalance with some of the talents feeling like they do nothing whatsoever, and some talents feeling like they are carrying the entire spec, notably something like Awakening, feeling like it's just hard carrying all the time, especially when you play something like Herald. So it's nice to see some more balancing coming into it. I still don't think that they're going to be seeing much of Ending Crusader, but it's nice that they're shoring it up a little bit and also buffing our damage in the process, which felt almost entirely dependent upon something like Blessing of Summer. On the Priest side, we've got uh, some weird stuff here, let me tell you. Uh, healing done from Void Shift to the Priest's Ally is now capped at twice the Priest's health. I guess they didn't enjoy us Void Shifting trees in Amir Jassil. Uh FDCL from Darkness Comes Light now increased the healing of Flash Shield by 3% and stacks up to 20 times, was 50 times. Um, Honestly, also kind of a weird one. I think this is also competing with Protective Light, if I'm not mistaken, which is our damage reduction from Flash Heal. I can't even remember the last time I talented into this ability. So, uh, you know, huzzah. Maybe a faster stack rate will be a little nicer, but not expecting too much from it. Cauterizing Shadows increased your healing by 60%. This thing was awful when I tested it before. I'll test it again this coming week with the uh, re reset and the adjustments coming in for the beta build, but I'm not really expecting that much from it. I would love it if it is quite strong, especially for disc. If there was like a natural like disc buff for it, that would help a lot. But eh, we'll see what happens. Notably, solving some of the issues around Halo pulling mobs, that was awful and really hated having to deal with it. Surge of Light being a one-pointer is really, really, really sweet. Uh, very, very pleased about that. 
because there's a lot of survivability, especially if you're playing like Oracle, you do really want to get Angelic Bulwark because it basically like doubles the strength of it. So having Surge as a one-pointer and hey, Manipulation as a one-pointer, yay, <laughs> right? It'd be nice to be able to see. Oracle getting some more changes and adjustments. Um, yeah, having your, there were a lot of Insight bugs. I think there's still a number of these for your Prem Initiative Insight, so great. Um, energy cycle not benefiting from apotheosis. Good to see some adjustments there. You resolved an issue causing preemptive care to increase the duration of atonement for longer than intended. I did notice this. It felt like I just had infinite uptime, so I don't think this is really the end of the world. Preventative measures increase the damage of Penance, Smite, Holy Nova by 40%. So, again, a little bit of a history. This was 15%. I think last week it was 25%. And so now it's going to be 40%. And so they're really... It's a nice way to do it, honestly. They're not... They're, they're pretty much, it seems like, done nerfing the Living Bejesus out of Voidweaver. And now they're buffing Oracle to start compensating. So that's nice to be able to see. Uh, that was probably the biggest problem with Oracle Dispriest is that you had all the atonement uptime in the world, but it didn't feel like your damage abilities hit for squat. It's because you just you just didn't have Void Weaver. You didn't really have uh, the extra damage out of things like your Void Wraith or anything. So preventative measures getting some buffs is exactly what Oracle needs. It's like the right thing in the right place. These are just some nice damage buffs for Holy uh, as well. Keep in mind, most of the Holy Fire damage is Burning Vehemence Cleave. So this isn't going to make Holy Priest you know, ridiculously insane in its damage the way it kind of was in season four of Dragonflight, but something to keep an eye on. All damage increased by 5% for Dis Priests. Let's go. Uh, they very much needed this. Holy Nova increased, healing increased by 23%. Uh, <laughs> uh, powered Shield Absorb increased by 30%. I look confused by this one too. Not the, mm, yeah, a little confused by that one. Because I think that our shields were already pretty good, but at least they're not trying to buff defensive penance again. Last week's defensive penance buff felt uh, awful. Radiance's cooldown has been reduced to 18 seconds. This is a huge one instead of the 20 seconds. And so they basically made it so Bright Pupil is effectively the same thing. So it still gives you a 15 second uh, cooldown on your powered radiance. But the big part of this is it's going to feel a lot better taking Enduring Luminescence because it's been unchanged in this build. And previously, you kind of had to like weigh between a lot of cooldown reduction, you know, basically getting 25% of your cooldown reduced for Radiance or getting the smoothness of Enduring Luminescence. And now I think it's going to be a super easy selection to take Enduring Luminescence because the extra three seconds is not going to be that big of a deal at all in a key environment. It'll probably be more notable in a raid and likely still run Bright Pupil uh, in a raiding environment, but I feel a lot better about talenting into Enduring Luminescence for a key environment. It always felt awkward, especially in like season four of like playing around with it. So that's nice. Abyssal Reverie, this was actually hard carrying this back for a while, so... It's nice to see it get brought down a little bit and get some damage buffs to be able to help compensate. This, I mean, with all the shadow spells that you really have access to, Abyssal Reverie was just ridiculous. So, makes sense that it got some nerfs onto that one. Although, I really don't like the shield buffs or the Holy Nova buffs. The spec honestly just needs more damage buffs and needs more atonement duration more than anything else. So they fix an issue causing indemnity to not increase the atonement duration. They fix an issue which I did not know about, which makes a lot of sense now, where atonement healing was only being increased by 50% outside of the raid instead of the intended 70%. So I'm really eager to see how Disc is going to be playing, and I'm very glad I didn't make any big M plus tier lists yet. Following talents are now one point. Contrition! We save the day! Yay! Oh, okay. Yeah, nobody cares. Um, Heaven's Wrath, that'll be kind of interesting to see if the cooldown reduction is going to be a little bit better for running Ultimate Penitence, but that ability still has a ton of problems on its own, and I'm not e expecting really too much. Holy Priest had all of its damage increased by 10%. Actually, just to wrap this up real quick, I think these changes help Disc in a decent amount. They still need to do something about the tier set bonus that is increasing the value of your shields. I don't really know what the heck is happening with Disc right now, but they just keep on pushing more shield value, both in your tier set bonus and now with these buffs, and I really wish they wouldn't. It kind of feels like instead of actually having some decent spot healing here and there, they're instead just like, oh yeah, just shield the guy, and then Atonement will eventually top them off over time. So I guess that's some kind of solution, but... The tier set bonus, especially in a raid where you're trying to cast, you know, 
a combination of shields, renews, and then like a, any surge procs you might have before you use your radiances to put together your ramp. Feels like you have to just not cast shields, which feels wrong, especially when you miss out on atonement duration out of something like indemnity. And then you want to have your buffed up mind blast. So I wish they would fix that for the tier set bonus. Just make shield not actually impacted by this. I would rather have atonement duration or damage buffs or something like that instead of having more shield value. But I guess they're probably realizing that the ridiculous amount of absorbs that Mistweaver has from like Condor the Celestials and their cocoons, cheat cocoons from like their Celestials cooldowns is going to be competing with disc absorbs. So they're trying to head that off. I don't know. It's weird. Very, very weird. Anyway, on to Holy Priest. All damage increased by 10%. Prayer of Healing increased by 30%, along with Circle of Healing. Huzzah. These abilities are probably still not going to be that great in a dungeon environment, but I'll go double check. Healing Chorus increases the healing done by Circle of Healing by 3% instead of 5%. Um, this ability was honestly kind of dead after the tier set bonus from a mirror so goes away, because you need Renew Ticks to increase the healing of your Circle of Healing, and so it was already kind of dead. Uh, this doesn't, I mean, it kind of just buries it a little bit deeper into the ground because you're probably going to take a uh, prayer circle anyway, so you can get more cast of prayer of healing to benefit from the new set bonus. Lightweaver, I was already running before and freaking loving, and this just further encourages that. So it looks like a Lightweaver M plus season is locked in at this point. Love to be able to see that. Fix some issues with Gale's Song. We love to see that. Trail being a one pointer, we absolutely love to see that as well uh trail being two points and there's a lot of two point nodes that priest in general has to deal with so it's nice to see a little bit of streamlining onto that end as well and it makes it a little more comfortable to take something like i think it's what censure the chastise stun is probably where i would look to use one of those extra talent nodes from the beginning uh, and so, great to be able to see that. Holy in general really just needed, like, numbers buffs. And I think this is exactly what the Doctor ordered for the spec. If they fix the bugs around your four set bonus, costing you extra mana, I think Holy's going to be in very good shape for the M-plus season coming in. Utility notwithstanding. But from just an output perspective, the things that were gumming it up was healing done and mana. And so... If they're making an adjustment to the tier set bonus to fix that mana problem, the healing buffs are going to be nice. Uh, these prayer of healing, circle healing buffs are going to be nice in a raid. And I think Holy's going to absolutely crush the incoming raid. So, hey, we love to see it. For Resto Shaman to wrap us up, we got a little bit of survivability benefits for Farseer coming into it. Uh, both both on the Nature Harmony, interacting with Nature's Guardian. They also fixed an issue causing Downpour to not cause the Ancestors to use the Chain Heal, so that'll be interesting to see. I really want to see how insane this Hydro Bubble is going to be. I think, like, the very first iteration of it was, like, this massive shield in, like, Alpha or something and had some weird bug going on. So this seems like it's close to, like, the final form of Farseer, so I'll have to be playing with that in this incoming week and see how it's going to be performing. But love to be able to see that. Totemic, uh, oops, for Resto Shaman, here we go. Earth Surge now increases the healing taken by 15% instead of 10%. Uh, downpour healing is decreased by 20%, and the mana cost is reduced by 20%. This is fantastic. Downpour was cranking a ton of healing, but it also did feel like it had a massive mana cost, and I've noticed my mana was a lot worse when I was playing with Totemic as compared to playing with Farseer. So cool that they got that, um, they like rebalanced it really. Fixed an issue causing chain heals from Totemic Rebound to reset the stored healing value of Cloudburst. Yeah, there was a there was a reason nobody was running Cloudburst in uh, in beta for a while. So I'll give it a try. I'd love it if Healing Stream Totem was going to be like the new way uh, going forward, but we'll see what actually happens because yeah, there were there were a lot of uh, Cloudburst bugs in, in the beta, and so it's nice that there's adjustments so we could actually play with it before it ends up going live. Also fixed an issue, causing your Surging Totem to stop maintaining Healing Rain. There was also a bug where it was not maintaining Acid Rain as well. And so I'll be curious to see how Totemic Shaman's damage is going to be once those uh, issues are really resolved. They did nerf Shaman's healing by 5%. They did nerf Spouting Spirits' healing by 35%. Not too surprised by this one. Ancestral Awakening heals for 25 and 50% of the amount healed instead of 15 and 30 that's a really good buff, especially because Awakening is a two-point node, and it feels extremely expensive to take at the current healing it was doing. They also fixed an issue causing spell queuing Lava Burst after a heal surge to incorrectly consume Master of the Elements when Lava Burst is instant cast. 
and an issue causing APT to not benefit from totemic focused or oversized totems. So I'll be really curious to see how massive the Ankh totem, the ancestral protection totem, is going to be on this one. So very cool. Uh, I think there's actually excellent changes really across the board on this one. Not too surprised that Resto Shaman got a bit of the nerfs coming into it. Disc had been really needing a lot of buffs for a while, and it's kind of starting the process, although I think some of it is directed in the wrong areas. Holy seems like they're directed in precisely the right areas, which is good to see. I hope that this Heaven's Wrath change is kind of the start of some adjustments for Disc to just make Uppies, Ultimate Penitence, a little bit better, stronger, easier to work with. Not sure. Uh, Holy Pally, it, I, I'm very curious to see what they're going to do going forward with the rest of uh, the kit because Herald of the Sun have been getting a crazy amount of nerfs across the board. I think this is like the first week that we didn't actually see Holy Pally Herald nerfs, which is great. I <laughs> love that because no Holy Pally wants to sit there getting nerfed for eternity, right? Uh, a couple of like good adjustments that Miss Weaver is getting. Really curious to see if this is going to drop Tier of Mourning out of the meta or further encourage some kind of like fist weaving raid build or ancient teachings the monastery raid build uh last i heard from the mistweaver experts they said it was very expensive to be able to take and really have access to so we'll see what happens on that one i would love it if we could just kill off aug absolutely no notes <laughs> and consume flame like not too terribly big of a surprise uh going into that one curious if lifebind stays the way it is and we'll be able to kind of further see people like maximizing the output of lifebind not surprised at all by the Druid damage nerfs that came in. Love to see some Convoke balancing versus something like Incarn. Whenever I was playing Druid, I always feel like it took a long time for me to like set up my healing, and I really liked messing around with Convoke just to like test it out, experiment with it. So that's cool to be able to see uh, as well. A lot, of, a lot of talents for me to test out this week for Rest of Druid and see how they're going to be feeling. These are the notes that we had so far, like I said, on July 30th. Huge thank you to our patrons for making all this content possible. Let me know what you guys think about all these buffs and nerfs coming in for the healers. I'll be back on our stream and everything like that tomorrow. See you soon, guys.